I, um, analysis, I just want to take a look at NVIDIA specifically. But before I go any further, I want us to start by looking at VIX, which, of course, VIX is a volatility um, gauge or fear gauge or vol volatility measurement, market volatility measure measurement. So without wasting any, uh, any further time, let me turn you around um, and pull VIX up. So we can have a discussion ab about VIX for a moment, and then uh, we will, after that, head out to uh, NVIDIA. So uh, just a little bit about VIX is that, let me actually put VIX, first of all, before I tell you a little bit about VIX, let me put VIX in a daily, uh, let me put VIX in a four hour chart first, okay? And then of course I will reset my chart. Uh, you see that in the past few, the highest uh, VIX has been, it was, uh, sixty-five dollars, around sixty-six. Let's call it sixty-six dollars. And primarily, I will be using Heikenashi uh, candle charts, uh, chart pattern in this entire analysis. But if 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 needed, where needed, just to avoid or eliminate biasness or uh, bias in my analysis, I will change things around to a regular candle chart. Okay, just keep that in mind. Anyhow, uh, VIX here measures the market volatility and how it how, how it does that is that an increase an increase in vix or a rise in vix if the price of vix increases meaning that the price of the actual or the regular security or stock say for example nvidia itself that that security uh, start dropping in price because as vix increases in price that raises fear on uh, on the market, and then the pressure building from that kind of kind of brings the market down, not just for a particular security, but for other random securities as well. So, uh, for a stable market, we would want VIX to be oscillating within a certain range. We want VIX to be in a range, and uh, if by a range, let me if we if I draw a line right here. Uh, around this, um, and then I drew another line right around here. You see that the region, uh, the region which is uh, confined within this uh, top, let's call this top red um, resistance level. Let's call that a resistance level for now. Um, the, this zone within this resistance level and the support level is pretty, it's pretty balanced. And that means just in general, the market has been very steady within that, uh, or it's it's been just in an uptrend. There are a few consolidation up and uh, up and down, but mostly growing in one direction. But then, when everything starts going up or going completely down, there is a panic. So, where we are at the moment, we do have we do have VIX above the support level, which I mean the resistance level, which we had drawn earlier. It broke that resistance level, but um, because we are looking at this on a four-hour uh, time frame, this will not tell us a lot of things. So let's change this around. Actually, one thing you haven't noticed, or one thing you might not be knowing about Heikenashi is that Heikenashi really smooths out your trend and gives you the ability to vi visualize the trend in a more positive ways, eliminating your fear and panic. So what we see here on the last few candles of the closing previous days, uh, trading days, we do see that uh, we still have that green uh, candle um, a powerful high Kanashi candle looks like this. Okay, a powerful high Kanashi candle looks like this. The price opens. Uh, you see that there is no wick. Actually, let me uh, let me redo that. And uh, you see that the price opens, but there is no wick at the bottom of the candle. Okay, but um, the next one that will that would follow would also should also have no wick at the bottom okay but if you look at the last candle here there is wick there is a wick in both the top and the bottom that means what that tells us is that there is a potential reversal at that point 
if you see a doji, that's what we that's what we call it, which of course you know the doji. The doji in Haikanashi is very positive, is very, very powerful. A clear, powerful example that I can show you is if you look at these candles here, look at this green candle. You see that the pre the first candle has no wick, followed by next one that opens in the middle of the previous one, and that pattern continues with no wick. Okay, that is a strong trend, but then it reaches that point where we have this doji, like I was telling you, we have this doji right here. If you see a doji, that is just a potential reversal point, and that's what we are what we're expecting. Okay, and a clear example of that. Oops, let me get out of my drawing zone. A clear example for the last moment. The clear example was right here. We got the doji right there. That was our reversal for that trend. Anyhow, with that all aside, let's head over to the um, Nvidia, okay? And let's take a look at Nvidia. And actually, before we before we go, let's uh, change this. Ch let's change our charting into uh, a daily uh, chart, okay? So we are looking at things uh, in a different way. So on a daily chart, you will see that we still have that doji meaning that it should reverse at this point. So if it is reversing, um, a, like I said, a decline in VIX, which you of course would reverse and go come back this way, a decline in VIX uh, signals that there will be, we are going to start getting bullish, okay? That means the price of a specific security is going to start increasing or going up. And if that happens to be the case, that we should see, we should see, uh, how this translate to the Nvidia uh, Nvidia price from on a daily time frame from where we are, okay? Meaning this week coming ahead, moving forward. So we should see uh, Nvidia start to uh, have a pullback from where it was, and we're, we're going to look at that in a little more in depth uh, when we get to that. So just note that yeah, VIX is at a at a turning point, meaning we should expect um, we should expect. Nvidia to also be at a turning point. A clear example of what I told you earlier. You see here we have this uh, we have this doji, and that doji just indicates a clear reversal. Normally, when you're trading, when people are trading um, with Ikenashi, they just want to wait until the until the color changes. That's when they hop in the trade. Um, normally. What you want to pay attention to is exactly actually the the the, the doji here. You want to see the doji. You can hop in after that doji, or you can hop in after the next candle change, and confirming that there is little to no wick at all. Okay, that is that's a strong that's a strong trend. Uh, if any of you is asking a question, why I am not talking about the bond that I have in the background here, uh, and yet. It's it would be something that someone uh, someone would be interested in. This bun is just a, a, a hull moving zone that I help. I mean, it helps me to identify the direction. I mean, uh, to confirm the direction of the trend, and I use it as a trailing stop. Okay, sometime. So meaning, um, if price changes and I have that doji, the next candle forms and crosses that, I know for sure, for sure, we're in business, and then we'll have we'll ride that while we build our stairs by building our stairs um by building our stairs i'm referring to you have the first candle right here builds the stairs comes down builds the stairs comes down builds the stairs comes down and that pattern continues until you encounter your doji and that means that's your exit okay just that easy you don't have to be any technical in which, uh, whichever way or whatsoever you want to call it just knowing this simple basic will save you a ton of a ton of a ton of uh you know time reading or interpreting candles and and with that in mind let's hop over to um nvidia um and right here we do have nvidia and remember we're looking at a, a daily daily time frame um just to give you guys a clear example we had uh like like i said earlier oops let's get off of, out of this thing like i said earlier you are hoping for a doji in order for you to enter a trade 
if you're trading with like uh, with the Ikenashi and look at where I have just cycled here. This was a doji, which was indicating a reversal. And here, dojis are very, very powerful, very believable. I mean, very believable and very realistic. When you see a doji, at least expect that, expect that uh, change to, to, you know, to happen. Uh, one thing I will point out, though, when you're trading with, with, with a Haikanashi, there are levels or there are zones that you have to pay attention to. And for me, personally, the way I draw these zones is very different from the way you guys would draw your zones. Um, for example, if I'm to draw a zone, th let's treat this where we are as a support level, okay? Uh, on the pre a previous support level, level, which is going to be, of course, our current uh, resistance level going, you know, in this down, uh, in this bear trend. And then let's treat that our resistance, previous resistance level, but our current support level because we are trending down, okay? The way I would draw my zone is I would pick the tallest wick of the Haikanashi candle on what appears to be the zone, okay? Which in this case appears to be this. And I would draw a line from left to right. That becomes my next target zone. On the other hand, this, that means for NVIDIA to fall further, I would expect a reversal in within this zone, okay? So we're expecting to see, a t I mean, a, a, to see price fall to this $90, $90 level here, uh, or yeah, just a $90, let's call it $90. Um, and on the other hand, if the price reverse, the highest of the all time, I mean, the highest of all time, uh, the wick seems to be that, okay? I draw that, I pull I pull it all to the right, okay? With that in mind, that just tells me that if price bounce, if price happens to come all the way down here, okay? It can come and, you know, wiggle around and all that, but I would expect it to go back and test that zone and maybe break above that zone or, um have some sort of a reversal back from that zone and crush this, you know, this to the downside. If at all, we are trailing down, okay? That was a horrible drawing, just so you know. Um, so with that all said, oh, in place, uh, let's take a look at a more in-depth what's going on, okay? So um, to begin with, this was the previous uh, day closing. And like I said earlier, um, of all the signs and signals that I have mentioned already in this video, uh, the only doji that we see was the doji at that level there, okay? We do not see, remember, we do not see any doji right around here. And I don't know, uh, I think this was my analysis from some time back. Let's, let, let's get rid of that. Uh, delete. Okay, uh, we are expecting price to open tomorrow of course we're expecting price to open uh, right around here which is the average i mean average of the previous day closed and we are expecting that to come and test this level um which might happen tomorrow or might not happen tomorrow but we know for sure it should happen this week this coming week of tomorrow we and don't expect the price to you know we just we just want a week it doesn't matter how how far it goes in this zone. It can be this short in the zone, okay? Or it can be this in this this far in the zone, or it can be all the way far in the zone, okay? It doesn't matter how far in the zone this wick is going to be, okay? We just wanna be able to get a piece of pie in within this zone. And once we get that piece of pie, uh, that's just going to be what we're looking for. And as soon as you see that, you are starting to look for a call opportunity. Your call opportunity meaning you are expecting to get, um, starting to get bullish from this point onward, okay? And so with all that being said, let's take a uh, look at a larger time frame. Okay, I will, I will kind of uh, uh, shrink things around here. Um, the weird thing I don't like about this drawing thing uh, is that it's 
yeah, getting out of this drawing mode is is incredible, incredibly uh, challenging sometimes. So anyhow, I will put ourselves in a daily time frame. But also, if you look at a daily frame time frame, um, this zone. Uh, that we just drew a few seconds ago. This is on. If we extend this actually farther to the right, okay, I mean to the left. Sorry. If we extend that farther to the left, you will see that this is actually was at one point, um, sometime earlier this year was a support level. It was a strong support level. Uh, by what I am referring to is you see that there is this level right here, okay, which was inside that zone we just drew but also at the same time there was this support here which was inside as well this same zone but uh let's take a look at both of these two points actually i will uh, like i said earlier if needed i will have to change this whole thing to a uh, regular candle so i will do that in a second let's take a look at what this zone looks like on a regular time frame i mean on a, on a regular candle okay on a regular candle, you see that price came to this zone on September, I mean, on March, yeah, uh, March 8th, and it got rejected. Uh, there was a slight pullback here, uh, and then that slight pullback got picked up a little bit. Again, it got rejected on that same level, and then uh, there was a, a, a major pullback, okay? Um, so with that in mind, with that in mind, and of course, in addition to that, again, we are seeing or we are observing this level being a really huge consolidation level here. Uh, this whole thing indicates, gives us a strong, a strong uh, point, makes this a strong point. Just not just because this one particular uh, candle um, touched the touched the zone we drew, but simply because um, this was a historically strong point in the past. And we just want to keep that in mind uh, moving forward. Uh, if you put this in a uh, in a weekly time frame, I don't think we have a lot to play with on a weekly time frame. But also uh, on a weekly time frame, this still remains the strong support level. Okay. So we are hoping that NVIDIA at least next week or so should reach this level and uh, bounce off. However, the downside, not the downside, the other part that we're not talking about is what happens though if NVIDIA breaks this level? My opinion is that if NVIDIA does break this level this coming week, starting tomorrow, we should see a rally going on from right around here, from that level to the downside a little farther. But how far uh, downside? No, we we do well. Do we know? Well, maybe yes, we do know. Actually, we do know how far we can we that this could go down. Because if you look, take a look here. There is this doji right here, and this doji. If we put this doji actually on a high kanashi, maybe it would tell us something. This doji on a high kanashi, uh, we grab the highest wick of that doji. Um. And uh, let's give me a moment here. We grab the highest wick of that doji and we pull it around. Um, you will see that that highest wick does cover these two levels here. Okay. Meaning that if we do break below, the lowest we can expect NVIDIA to fall is $75. Okay. From the current price. Currently, it's trading 109 but the lowest you or the farthest you would expect it to fall is uh, $75. And that is probably the range or the region where we would find that fair value. Okay. That's the region where we would find that fair value. And again, on a weekly chart, on a weekly chart, if you guys, if you guys paid attention to what I, what I talked about in regards to um, the, the, the doji candle, which is our entry uh, signal. You will see that last week, not this red candle, the candle before this current candle, we had a doji. That is that means that is signal. Of, I mean, of course, signaling the beginning of a reversal trend. But then, it was followed by an extremely powerful candle. Okay. Anyhow, we're not gonna cover all this in one video, but uh, I just wanted to point out that we are still in a strong bearish move, which has just begun. Okay. Go through this, do your research.